Hello guys and girls, Screezilla here and I hope you're all well. And welcome to War Thunder. Now today I'm going to be talking a little about, uh, a little bit about the Type 74, the APF SDS shells, and also what we may be getting for the upcoming Tier 6 Japanese tanks. So, one of the uh, big questions I guess we're going to be answering today is the APFDS rounds. Now, let's talk about this kinetic round. Now, these come in two different types, really. We have the tungsten variants, a very dense heavy metal uh, that is used in the game currently. And there is also, however, the DU rounds, which is the depleted uranium, which has a similar high density to it like tungsten however it is slightly denser than tungsten itself um, but we don't have these rounds in game as of yet now that's something that I'm gonna put an emphasis on yet the uranium rounds actually have one major advantage over tungsten in which they actually ignite and can cause major fire damage once they penetrate a vehicle anyway Arm piercing, fin stabilized, discarding saber rounds. It is an extremely high velocity shell. It's more of a dart than a standard shell. And being extremely narrow and long makes it extremely aerodynamic. Along with a very small point of impact, it has a very high penetrative, va penetrative value to it, especially against thick armor. Now, it can get very complicated when talking about these rounds. They're a bit of an interesting round in themselves. Now, as you may, as you will have seen in game, they do have a horrendously high penetration value, but they're more effective against thicker armor because the thicker the armor, the more shrapneling effect they can cause. Now. One of the things that an arm piercing fin stabilized discarding saber has is it has a. Um, where am I? I've lost my spot. Uh, it, it uses a phenomenon called hydrodynamic penetration. It, but based simply on the density of the target, fluid and density and the length of the penetrator. The penetrator will continue to displace the target to a depth of the penetrator length times the square root of the penetrator to target density. Okay, that was a long word. So, we'll just go forwards a little bit in this game. We're going to creep around this corner here and we're going to start spotting some enemies. Now, there's going to be a BRT5, BTR5. And there's also going to be an object to one two one twenty one twenty. That's the one. So you can see the boob tank over there. Um, so I've got my fin stabilized tungsten round loaded, and I just go over the top of the boob tank there. Anyway, this is a tungsten round for us. So as we see here, it's hitting the target. Now you get this sort of mushrooming effect that happens, and this is basically where the fluid dynamics come into effect you observe immediately that the longer and denser, denser the penetrator is it will penetrate to deeper depths and this forms the basis of for the development of the long rod air anti armor projectile. Now just here we actually see a um, rifled barreled variant of the uh, fin stabilized disguise and save rounds. Um, this is now to your normal smooth bore. Just as we go back to that last image we saw, you saw there was a little ring around it and that's to stop it from spinning. You don't want a f one of these rounds spinning too much because it will lose its um, velocity but it will also lose its accuracy. Now, 
of course, the items which they're penetrating are not technically or really fluids. Nevertheless, at significant high impact velocity, even crystalline materials begin to behave in a highly plastic fluid-like manner. So many aspects of hydrodynamic penetrations do apply to this. And this is what we see with thin unpiercing thin stabilised discarding sabers. So here we see it penetrating a concrete wall, and you just see it just goes straight through there. Basically, a uh, also a uh, opal, um, oh, not an Astra, uh, cadet, opal cadet there being hit, um, and you see it goes in. It actually causes fire in this vehicle. I believe they're using a uranium round here, but. Just the sheer kinetic force of this creates fire because of the friction. It also turns much of the metal and material inside to fluids. And that's where it really comes into effect. So right here we've got the object 120. So we take aim. And we're going to get a shot off. And we hit the magical optics port there. And, of course, Magical Optics Port managed to absorb all of the kinetic energy of the round. But you do see we do a lot of damage to the vehicle. On piercing Fin Stabilised, basically, this thing is an absolute weapon. As I say, with those last images I showed you, and the demos of it, basically these rounds almost act like, turn an armour into almost a fluid. It's almost like pushing your hand through water, how everything displaces, and that's sort of what happens. Now, what is armor piercing fin stabilized good for? Well, you will have seen in this video, spaced armor, ceramic armor, well, not in this video, but in the game, we've got spaced armor, um, we've got reactive armor, thick armor. We haven't yet got ceramic armor. I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in a moment. It will go through angled armour really well too. It won't go through optics ports of course because nothing that can go through glass. Um, <laughs> but anyway, a big thing for Kinetic Round is reactive armour. So reactive armour can really cause problems for this round uh, just because when it hits it can cause, the explosion can cause the uh, the tungsten round just to shear sort of into a different direction and that's generally the problem however for everything else this round is amazing at penetrating um, for thicker armor it's better though very thin armor you're gonna have problems because the round will just go straight through it and just keep going um, so in theory if you're firing at say a PT-76 you could fire through the crew compartment and you'd probably take out a T-62 sitting next to it without any problems. Um, this round is your best option to use though, especially against ceramic armour, uh, spaced armour, reactive armour, all the modern armours basically, because kinetic energy will just go straight through. Now this round doesn't have any explosive mass to it, but the sheer velocity is what causes the damage because this round is traveling at supersonic speeds once it penetrates it just decimates everything inside as you saw with that object 120 we absolutely decimated it once we actually penetrated um but it's not the target we really want to go for just because it is quite thinly armored but if you're using say the mbt or kpz 70 um, instead of using the ATGMs on other KPZ or MBTs, you'll have problems penetrating their turret armour, for instance. You're better off with the um, fin stabilised discarding sabre for that shot because you will actually go through that super spaced armour and that reactive armour and really cause damage. So, that's the arm piercing fin stabilised discarding sabre shell. I hope you found that interesting. Now! On to tier 6 for Japan. Now this is a hard one. Uh, it has been confirmed. We are getting tier 6 for Japan, uh, Jap Japan, 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 for Japanese vehicles. Um, however, Japan really has very little in the way of late tanks. 
the only real option there is is the Type 90. Um, and that's the only real tank that I can think of that will fill the role. But it may well be a little bit too powerful. As it's comparable to the Leopard 2A4, um, it has ceramic armour with a value capable of stopping 850 millimetres of penetrative value from a kinetic round and four, 1400 millimetres of penetrative value to an explosive round. So, um, for instance, a ATGM is not going to do anything, not even a hot uh, from the... Um, the uh, Rackland and the Alpans are hot, is not going to do anything to the front of a Type 90. So this thing is going to be an absolute beast if we get it. The other thing is it does have the 120mm smoothbore Ramatol Borsic gun, uh, which actually has an auto loader to it as well, and this will make the tank an absolute beast, especially at 9.0. So I expect it to be a possibly the highest BR tank we have yet in-game added, um, I expect it to be a very high BR vehicle, possibly even like a, I don't know, maybe even a 9.5 or 9.7, something like that, because this thing is just going to be monstrous. Um, now, the Ramatol Borsic 120mm uh, gun, it has ridiculously good rounds to it as well. You've got the uh, tungsten rounds, but also it would carry the um, DU rounds, the depleted uranium rounds, um, and that's not typically carried by the Japanese forces per se, but once we start getting to this type of vehicle, it generally is something that more and more will have on them, and depleted uranium is going to add a different feel to these rounds because it's going to once it leaves the barrel of the gun, the speed of it actually ignites the uranium and it, it acts almost like a phosphorus round. It will just go through, set fire to everything it contacts and really do a lot of damage. So I'm really not sure what we're going to be getting for Jap uh, the Japanese t uh, tech tree for this tier 6 area. When you consider this tank here, the Type 74, was actually put into commission in 1974. It's one of the most modern tanks in game, or the most modern tank in game. The Type 90 was not put into service until the 90s, even though it was developed in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. It wasn't actually commissioned until the 1990s. So we're going to start getting things like the uh, Leopard uh, 2A, M, 2A4, the Abrams, um, the um, uh, not the Chieftain, the uh, um, the thingy. Uh, oh, my brain's gone dead. But you know, very modern fighting vehicles. Basically, we're going to start seeing extremely modern tanks if we start getting things like the Type 90 in. And if you look at the Type 90, it does look pretty much like that Abrams-style tank or that Leopard uh, Leopard uh, 2 tank. It's very advanced. Other options um, for the Japanese tanks? Well, the only real two tanks left for Japan in this late period that we're talking about is the modified M8 Greyhound they had uh, with a 20mm Acrylian gun on board uh, but that will be highly ineffective at higher BRs I guess they could add an ATGM to it but realistically that's not going to work um, there is possibly the chance of the M110 howitzer but that was used for artillery strikes. It's not really a tank destroyer. And it's got that 154mm gun, I believe, on it. Which it will have... Um, you might get Hesh or something on it. It will be similar to the um, the big British tank that we got. I can't remember the name of it. The FV4005? Um, you know, that sort of style of Hesh round to it, 
but as I say, it's more of an artillery piece than a tank destroyer. Other than that, th there's pretty much nothing in the Japanese self-defense force that can be added. Um, as I say, when you consider the Type 74 is actually still in service in Japan, you know, this tank is modern. It's, it's part of their modern equipment. As I said, the Type 90 is a very small tank as well. It, it's one of the smallest main battle tanks of the sort of current generation, including the Type 10 actually, again, which is very small. Japan has t tends to make very small tanks simply because they uh, need to move them via the railway systems uh, because of the mountainous regions in the country. Um, a beautiful shot there, but the optics ports again managed to block it, of course. Um, so what can really be added to the Japanese self-defense forces? What will Gaijin add? Let me know in the comments below what you think. What do you think we're going to get for the uh, JSDF? I really don't know. The only other things I can think of are the um, super heavy paper tanks that they were developing. Um, the Type 5 heavies, things like that, uh, which, which World of Tanks has got them, for instance, you know, that sort of thing may be added, and I guess that's probably about it. That's about all we could actually hope for. Because one of the other issues is after sort of about 1950-1960, Japan didn't use any vehicles from uh, really nice shot there on that um, Object 120 as you saw, just went straight through his gunner, but because of that thin armour, just not enough shrapnelling effect there. This second shot here just went a little bit high, and as you see just ricochets off that top plate. Um, so let me know what you think is going to happen. As I said, I really don't know what they can add, and with those ridiculous super heavy tanks there are that the in World of Tanks, as I said, for their top tiers, they're, they're, they're World War II technology, they're not going to work in this modern environment. They have ridiculously thick armour, but it's not a modern composite armour, it's not a ceramic armour or a composite rigid armour or anything like that, so it will get absolutely hammered by vehicles of later models, much like the mouse suffers. So, yeah, what do you think we're going to have added? Um, so let me know below, let me know what you think. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this bit of gameplay as well. Um, the Type 74 really is a monster now with the arm piercing fin stabilised discarding Savo shells. Alright guys, until next time, this is Screezilla out. Have a lovely day, lovely night, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Run.